where to start this video. Hey, listen, I'm going to give you a look at my ride. I didn't clean it up too much, but I've got it all repaired and put back together. The 2003 Tundra. Really, it's looking pretty good. The paint actually has no defects other than where I've smacked it. And uh, the inside, the seats aren't ripped. All the upholstery's nice. Nothing's cracked on the dash. It's all looking good. Arm rolled nice. Where's the biscuit? Hiding under the trailer. See, she's a front yard dog. She doesn't even need a rope. Better than her daddy. Red boy would hang up, but he couldn't do it on no rope. Man, the wheels look good. I, I think eventually I'll change the shocks in the back, but I got a few things to do first. It's all full loaded. And okay, we got the Tundra here, and man, that new front suspension really lifted the front end up by about an inch, maybe a little more. The back end's always been sitting low, but you can actually see a significant <laughs> difference, and I don't care. I might get new shocks for the back, and then that lift will be evened out. Hey, tubers. <coughs> Biscuit and I are here, <coughs> working on the gold truck. You knew it was only a matter of time before I was gonna have my ass under the hood or under the truck fixing something. So, here's another video for you. This time, rear shock absorbers. And uh, I'll show you in a second what's wrong with mine. I thought it was the rubber, but they're actually leaking around the, uh, around the cylinder, I guess, or whatever it's called. Anyways, these are the new bad boys. They're Monroe's. They got some kind of guarantee, so hopefully that'll be nice. They're just plain black, though. And I'm not doing a damn thing to them, because soon they'll be just plain mud. All right, let me show you what's going on under the truck. Okay. Biscuit, you ready to work under the truck or are you just going to hang out here and do nothing? All right, here we go. So, on the driver's side, the easiest way it seems to get access to the shock absorber is <coughs> you just take down the spare tire here. There's the spare tire gone. And you have easy access to the lower nut. And you can also get right over here to the upper nut, no problem. Now, on the passenger side here, it appears, because they put the shocks on opposite sides, or, you know, caddy corner, however, I'm going to have to pull off this wheel in order to get to that shock absorber. And uh, I might even have to unclip a wire at the top or something. But that one will be gotten to through the wheel well. This one easier... And what I've done is jacked up the truck, and I'm just going to try to pop it out, and if I need to, use the jack to lift and spread and see if I can't squeeze that new bad boy in there. Okay. Well, wish me luck, and I'll keep you posted on what I find as it happens. Biscuits and hot standby. Hey, chicken bone. Biscuit. Yeah. Chicken bone. Hey, chicken bone. Biscuit. Oh, the rope's not long enough for you to do much more than that. Well, that's good. That's just where I want you. Oh, wow. That was really simple. Job's done. One nut at the top, one bolt at the bottom. A 14 and a 17 millimeter. You're done. It's easy, simple. Mine weren't rusted too bad. Uh, like I said, to do the driver's side, you're going to want to go through like I did where the spare tire is passenger side looks like it's going to be easy access just pop off the tire uh, the only big trick I got to tell you is uh, when you're trying to take off that top nut it's going to spin and they put a little flat on there that you can put a wrench on but really the easiest way is just split your skirt and uh, then you put a vice grip on the shaft hold it still now on these Monroe shocks okay it's a metal cap here. You can hear that. But they've welded it to this nut 
So if you were to grab this cap with something or put a, a wrench on that nut or there's also the flat on the top, I don't believe I'll have any trouble getting these bad boys apart. And now let me show you one thing more. When I initially did the front struts, I went with the Monroe Quick Struts. Lifetime guaranteed. That's why I went with the match in the back there, the Monroes. Well, man, I, I mean, I changed the shocks before and reused the springs. But when I did the Monroes, I picked up at least an inch of clearance between the tire and the uh, wheel well. Well, I just bought Monroe two-wheel drive, you know, the regular old crap. Look how much space I've got on the wheel well now on this side. Let me take you around to the other side where the stock ones are still there. And I don't know if they're just wore out. Well, they are wore out. But uh, as you can see, it's about an inch, two inches lower. And I actually measured the distance with my uh, hand. And uh, this side's lower. When I change that, I expect it to lift up. Hey, 85 bucks got me a pair. That was with tax and everything. I had a coupon for $10. Dirt cheap. And like I said, if they go out again, lifetime warranty. Now, see, you can see it here on this one. It's leaking a little bit of oil. I, there's oil crust wet right here. The other one, you can actually, I'll show it to you, I hope. You can see the oil leaking down the side. That was what made me decide it was time to change the bad boys. Okay, but this is this is really, really simple. I mean, the hardest thing is getting yourself set up and access. And after this, all new rubber. And I was telling you about the AC. Well, psh, I'm letting Toyota fool with that. When you push the little button, the light comes on and blinks. Unlike Camrys and Corollas, you can't get to the electronics and the fuse box. I found out they're behind the dashboard. I don't have the skill to test them. I'm glad I'm not. First group of parts that showed up were dead. No good. So Toyota's still fooling with it and not, pay it, not charging me a dime. Mark Jacobs and Toyota will give them the shout out for that. Anyways, shocks went on nice. Got a big amount of body lift. I mean noticeably. I don't know if you can see it over here as well. Yeah, see? There's just, and I'm even holding it down, there's just not the amount of lift that you're seeing with the new shock over here. Look how much damn tire well there is. Anyways, I'm going to change the other side. Well, what we're looking at is the passenger side wheel well. I've pulled the wheel off and I've actually pulled the shock absorber out. It should be somewhere in here. What I want you to see though is this shock you can actually see where the oil has been running down the side. And uh, the top's all kind of corroded, mushy, gooky. But really the big th thing that made me decide was uh, when I saw this oil dripping or below the boot. It wasn't dripping but it was there. And uh, that's from the shock. Now with this one, it was a little bit trickier to pull out. I tried to do the old vice split it, put a set of vice grips on it. It just would not break free. So I had to use double wrenches. One on the top, which I found a crescent wrench was about the only thing that fit. And then the other one was that 14 mil. All right, putting it back together is so simple. I've got new rubber. You just stuff it in. Uh, about the only difference is that the uh, new stuff doesn't use this middle uh, piece of metal. And hell, this one's all mashed through. Wow, that is kind of crappy. Yep, it was way overdue to change these bad boys. And they are real simple to pop back in and out. Alright, the new shocks are in. Kind of hard to see, but there's the new nut. Very easy to work. Uh, instead of a plastic skirt on the top, these actually have a metal skirt. But that's not going to be a problem because it's welded to a nut for the top of the shaft. So you can actually just hold this or clamp it and you've frozen the shaft. And of course down here that bolted up like a dream. I don't know, can you see it? Yeah, that bolted up like a dream. Everything here underneath fit good. 
Biscuit, how's it look on that side? Chicken bone. Nope, she ain't working today. Oh, the head, there we go. You can see the other shock. Right through there, there's the other side. Both of them brand new. Man, it was easy. I mean, easy. The hardest thing, hardest thing is getting those nuts at the very top undone. You got two choices, the double wrench or splitting the boot. On this side, splitting the boot didn't work. I had to use the double wrench at the top, at least to get it broke free. All right, all I got to do is put a jack under this thing, lift it up, and slap a tire back on it. Take it off the jack stand. I'm done. You just got done seeing me and Biscuit fix the uh, the Tundra. Shocks are on. The ride is so nice. I got to recommend it. If you can change your tire on this job, you can change those rear shocks. Now, of course, if you live up north and you got a rusty old car, you're going to struggle. I got to tell you, my, my truck is basically very rust-free. Changing that front suspension, I found some rusted parts. But uh, overall, everything on mine, the nuts and bolts turn. And uh, the car dealer got some bad electronic parts. They're ordering some more. Hey, when the AC's fixed, the Tundra will be sweet. And uh, I'm going to keep driving it. So, you know, that's all I can do. Damn truck. You know, you got to dig it out to the bottom, and that's nothing. It's this side. Look at all that crap. All this shit. This big pile. This was all in my truck. Now, some of it's going back in, but before then, I got a vacuum. See? It's empty right now. I could sell it, but I'm not.